I checked with the Cabinet Secretary, and it turns out that in the seven years I have been Prime Minister, we have had 164 audiences, always the model of cordiality, productivity, and mutual respect. So it is perhaps not unreasonable to expect an isolated hiccup. What hiccup? I was under the impression that Her Majesty never expressed her political views in public. I don't. That there was an unbreakable code of silence between Sovereign and First Minister. If you're referring to the Sunday Times, I've always advised my Prime Ministers against reading the newspapers. I don't, ma'am. They misunderstand, misquote and misrepresent. Then everybody gets into a fluster. But my press secretary does. And he has working relationships with all of the editors, and the editor, in this case, assured him that the sources were unimpeachable, close to the Queen, unprecedentedly close. Well, I'm sure a clarification will soon be forthcoming. In the meantime, should we not make a start on the business of the week, only I am mindful of the time. This is the business, ma'am. The only business. I think we have enough respect for one another personally to ask ourselves some of the bigger questions. Woman to woman. We are the same age after all. Really? Just six months between us. Oh, and who is the senior? I am, ma'am. Uncaring, confrontational, and socially divisive. That's how these sources so close to the Queen describe me. Prime Minister. That I lack compassion, and that my government has done irretrievable damage to the country's social fabric. My responsibility for the time I have in office, is to put sentimentality to one side and look after this country's interest with the perspective of a cold balance sheet. And while I greatly admire your sense of fairness and compassion for those less fortunate than us... Do you? Really? Let us not forget that of the two of us, I am the one from a small street in an irrelevant town, with a father who could not bequeath me a title or a commonwealth, but only grit, good sense and determination. And I don't want people's pity or charity or compassion. Nothing would insult me more. My goal is to change this country from being dependent to self-reliant, and I think in that I am succeeding. I have had to learn many difficult lessons as sovereign. Britons are learning to look after number one, to get ahead, and only then, if they choose to look after their neighbor. Of those? No one would remember the good Samaritan if he only had good intentions. You see, he had money as well. Perhaps the hardest is that I am obliged to support my prime ministers on any position they take, even yours, regarding sanctions against South Africa. My question is, given the lack of impact it has on your day-to-day -day political fortunes, yet how important it is to me, could you not have supported me just once? My fellow Commonwealth leaders, many of whom I consider to be friends, now feel that I have betrayed them on an issue most important to them. Well, they need only read the Sunday Times. It will give them no doubt as to your position. Look, our time is up. How it flies. You must be very much looking forward to the wedding tomorrow, Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson. Yes, we are.
They seem like a good match. Yes, we think so. My own son, Mark, recently announced that he would be getting married. Your favourite? The Explorer? Not an Explorer, ma'am. That was just the once. He's a businessman now. In the Middle East, mostly. And South Africa. Of course. Your Majesty. 